Follow YouTube. I'm show you check my oil. Look. Maybe need two liters. Because we had a little bit of a slow week, I figured it would be a good idea to maybe have some other people on the channel that haven't been on yet. So I invited our agronomist from Keystone, Jason Javelin, out, and we're going to have some footage of him later. And I also go out to Elton and Orchards and talk to my buddy Alec, and he gives us a, a little intro to what he does and uh, what their farm's about. What's going on? So this week I thought about asking our guy Jason Javelin from Keystone. Here's Jason to come out and talk to us and kind of give us a little more uh, in-depth information about our uh, apple orchard here. We're in our John Agul block and Jason's going to show us some stuff. So yeah, uh, my name is Jason Javelin. I work for Keystone Cooperative. I've been there now 18 years. Um, I've worked with Cherry Key for almost 15 years probably long-time customer and it's been really enjoyable working with them on the apples it's a new venture for them and uh, it's been nice to be there along the way so today we're looking at apple thinning uh, every apple tree will put on more fruit than it will ever need or ever be able to to make a marketable apple the apples would be small uh, just not what you're looking for and then the next year you wouldn't have much left on the tree the, the the return bloom would be poor so we go and chemically thin apples um, so what we look for after we've done that typically you give them about seven to ten days to two weeks depending on the weather and you can start to see signs that the the thinner is working the first sign you look look for is the stoppage of growth Here's a big healthy apple that you can see is going to make it. Here's a small one. Touch it, falls right off. These two right below it probably won't fall off to the touch, but you can pull them off easily. And when you cut into them, you can see the seeds are starting to turn yellow. That's an excellent sign because, again, we do not want ha near half of these apples. On a limb like this, two apples would be plenty. It would help train the apple tree to bring it down and again, give a good marketable size fruit. See there again, you've got an apple. You can see the seeds are dying and without the seeds, the apple will abort. The, the real reason that they, there's an apple on the tree anyways is they, they do it for reproduction. That was the natural reproduction and without a seed, there's no reproduction, so the apple tree will abort that apple and put its energy into other apples, making a crop, and put energy into the growth. And, and this being a new orchard, we want more energy going into growth than we do into apples. But they've been in the ground, what, two, three years now, Talon? Yep. At that point, we start to want a, uh, a bit of a balance, and we'd like to start putting some apples on that tree, or else the growth can get too long and a bit unmanageable. So it, it, everything in nature is, is about balance, and that's what we're doing here. We're trying to find a balance and, and trying to find a good crop without uh, too many apples so that we'll have them next year. Jason does a really good job explaining the apple thinning process here in that video we just saw. Uh, I have to give Jason props. We do a lot of work with him, and I do give him a bit of a hard time. But his, you know, his knowledge and and help that he has given me and taught me about the apples and you know the nutrients and everything that an apple grower would need to know that I didn't getting into this a couple years ago has been super helpful. So now, now that all the cherries are out of the shucks and out in the sun, you can really start to kind of evaluate the crop a little bit better about what, how much poundage we're gonna have, how the crop looks uh, in general. So I figured a little bit, spend a little bit of time on this video more than normal, and we'll go through the, you know, the different types of crops, uh, the different types of cherries. We'll go sweets and the tarts, and also look at some of the apples and um, show you guys kind of what they're looking like at this point in the year. Um, I'm out here in the sweet cherries right now, one of the older tree blocks, and some of them are even starting to turn red already, which is crazy because it's the 
end of the first week of June, which usually we don't start to see color till mid till mid to, to end of June. So that's exciting and just proves the point that, you know, when you have an early spring and there's a quick warm up, everything starts moving quicker. And that's kind of the state that we're in here. So we'll check out the sweet cherries first and then we'll make our way some apples and finish off with some tart cherries. So this older block here has a couple different varieties. Um, but this one's really standing out here as all the cherries are, um, you know, they're really starting to turn. That's kind of how they start out. And then they start getting a little bit plumper and they turn a little straw color. And then they'll slowly but surely start turning a little bit more red. And then eventually they grow plump with some rain and, and sunshine and you end up with a full sweet cherry. Love hearing from you guys. If you see anything you have a question about, you want to put it down in the comments below. I love reading them. I love answering questions here uh, for you guys. Also, if you enjoy what you're seeing, like always, like and subscribe down below. One last thing also, if you guys want to put a guess in at how much the total poundage is that we are going to produce this year, put it down in the comments below. I'm going around and doing my estimate right now, and I love to know what you guys think we're going to, we're going to produce this year. So now we're out in, the, in one of our apple orchards. This is one of the least farms that we have. It has a couple acres of Ida Reds and Jana Golds. Uh, we're gonna look at one of the Ida Red trees here. They're a little older and, and um, a more standard planting. These trees are very mature. As you can tell, look at the, the size of the trunks on these things. They've been here quite a while. <clears throat> and one of the Ida Reds is one of the, one of the easiest apples to grow. It, and it produces a lot every year. So this is just a, taking a peek at some of the apples. This would be the bottom end, the calyx of the apple. And you can see they're starting to gain some color on the tops and the sides, which is always the side that colors up first is whatever the sun, the side that's facing the sun. So even after the thinning application, we're still holding on to some apples, which is good. And still dropping some of the smaller ones. We haven't quite seen the thinner work all the way. Uh, here's an example of um, two that didn't make it. Usually these will just fall. See, I can just pluck them off. They just fall, they just fall right off nice and easy. Same with that one, plop. So last but not least, we're at the tart cherry block. We hit the sweet cherries. We stopped and looked at some of the apples and now we're gonna start looking at some of our tart cherries. Uh, this is a majority of our acreage and this is a farm that we pruned this year. We took a lot of wood out. So it's not gonna have the biggest crop it's ever had, but boy do we still have a lot of cherries all these little green dots are all cherries they're really starting to turn to that strawish color so with all this rain they're kind of starting to plump up a little bit and you start to see if i can get a close enough look that they're starting to turn a little bit red at the top a little sunburn this tree is looking real nice this one over here is loaded and almost all of these are gonna have a great crop on them this is a 2004 planting and over here we have a 2014 but almost all of them are just just roped on you know it's gonna be a good year when when it's beginning of June and, and the, the branches are already starting to hang down I mean, even even all on the inside there's cherries all throughout the tree beautiful looking crop here I had an idea where I thought that maybe we should maybe do a collaboration with some other local farmers in the area to try and show some other specialty crop commodities that that I personally don't grow on our farm and I put a vote up on the community tab on the Poems and Stones channel page and that's a good place that I like to communicate with you guys on some other votes and topics and um, you guys can post any questions or things you'd like to know about uh, on there and that's located on the channel on the community tab so I got talking with a long time friend of mine, Alec Eltonen, and we thought that we, would, we should get together and he would show us around their farm and show us a little bit about what they do. Hey, what's going on everyone? I have commandeered the camera from Talon. You can probably see him talking in the phone in the background, but let me do a little introduction. So my name is Alec. I work at Eltonen Orchards. It's my family's farm. It's been in our family for little over 80 years we do a bunch of specialty crops and we sell them at retail locations in the area a little bit of wholesaling I'm standing out in a strawberry field right now we also do a bunch of different berries so we do some blueberries raspberries some grapes 
and we also do tree fruit like Talon. So we do some cherries, we do some apples, we do some pears. I'm sure you're gonna see some in some upcoming videos. We also do a bunch of specialized, we call it garden projects. Uh, we do in some plastic over there. We'll take a closer look. We experiment with a bunch of vegetables and other things that we can sell at our farm markets. So, I'll see you guys around. We'll be uh, collaborating and yeah, let's go farming. Also going on with uh, Talon's other video, we uh, grow our trees on the rootstock called Bud Nine. So they uh, they grow about three, four feet away from each other, and they just climb up the the trellis system. So Bud Nine uh, with this specific block works 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 pretty damn well for us. some of the nozzles to get a lower spray on these trees because these honey crisps are not as tall as the other apples that I was spraying so you just need to adjust for the height of the tree so you're hitting foliage and uh, this uh, sprayer we did a, a little manual setup on it so it's a quite rudimentary you just uh, flick these off to turn off the sprayer so it's just everything has to be manual Just uh, readjusted the nozzles because I was targeting the top parts of the uh, the apple trees where I want to do a little bit more thinning. The apples on the top are the most healthy, so they're the ones that obviously don't want to let go of the tree. And sitting right next to it is some of my favorite uh, trees on the whole of our farms. They are really old apricot trees. They're not. Uh, they're ungrafted, so these are just naturally growing giant apricot trees. So I think that's gonna be it for the video. Not too much really crazy this week because of the weather. I do wanna again give out a big thanks to Jason, the Javelin our Agronomist from Keystone for all the help that he gives to me. Helps us out at the farm pretty much on all aspects of uh, you know tree nutrition and health and um, keeping an eye on all pests and uh, infections in the trees. 
Also, Alec for jumping in on the video and showing us a little bit more about his operation. And next week, I'll look to try and wrap up some of the projects I've been doing throughout all of the, the video series so far this spring. And last week, I forgot to add one video of our last mower. It's a, on another 2640 with a, I think it's a 13 and a half foot woods, woods mower. So you'll see a little bit of that uh, on the outro here. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys next week.